In today's tip, we're going to be breaking down how Cliff the God basically ran one play to get him to the finals of the Madden uh, Ultimate Thanksgiving Tournament. And we're going to be in the Washington playbook. That was a playbook that Clef the God was in. If you guys want to get access to my full uh, Washington offensive ebook where I go over gun bunch, gun tight, as well as gun bunch tight end, you can get that by joining my Patreon. It's only 10 bucks. Get you access to all of our ebooks as well as all the updates to those ebooks and any new ebooks that we will release in the future. So Clef was essentially going from gun bunch to gun tight pretty much all game. Um, I think he literally ran tight almost every single play. And I want to go over like his basic, very simple, uh, but very basic scheme that was actually really effective and almost won him a belt. So the play was slot post out of gun tight. It's actually the stock uh, deep pass audible in this formation. And essentially he ran slant post, but he did so in kind of a unique way if you actually think about what he was doing. So let's get on the field here. We're just going to show you this basic setup. So at the most basic level, Clef was essentially running some variation of the following setup. He would streak his slot receiver. He would slant this outside receiver. He would motion this guy outside to potentially create a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. And then he would either wheel his running back, in route his running back, or out route his running back. Those are kind of his main setups. But again, it all kind of revolved around this basic slant post concept over the middle with the streak clearing out any deep zones and then having a one-on-one -on -one opportunity on the right side in case they left his um his guy one-on-one -on -one. so his first read would be he would look out here to the right if that guy was one-on-one -on -one, as soon as that db turned his hips he would try to basically make a one-on-one -on -one aggressive catch and that's actually where he had um harold carmichael who in ultimate team is like six eight and um you know probably the best aggressive catch player that we've seen so this would cause the opponent to have to basically throw some kind of zone over here to the right side, probably a deep half. Um, a lot of times we were seeing some kind of outside third and then some kind of man up on that player. So then this opens up the middle of the field. And so the user has to choose, am I going to guard the slant or am I going to guard the post? This post route is actually one of the best man beating routes in the entire game, especially if you have short and elite. Now, most of you at this time, at this point, probably have a receiver that has the short and elite ability on them. So again, you see here, this is the basic setup. Now, let's say that the opponent said, you know what, I'm gonna choose and I'm gonna run with the tight end. I don't want you to be able to throw this tight end. So I am gonna basically try to take away, you know, take away this tight end over here in the middle of the field. If this was the case, then Clef would basically progress and he would want to look down to the slant route over here and try to possession catch that for a simple gain of about, you know, five to seven or uh, five to 15 yards. Now, another one of the most underrated pieces of Clef's progression is actually this running back route. If you take a look at man to man coverage, um, you're going to notice that oftentimes this running back route is going to be out leveraged uh, to the flat. So right out of the snap of the ball, he can throw that quick and a lot of times be able to pick up easy yards with his running back. So the user has to respect that. And essentially the lurk from the user would have to look something like essentially going from the running back wheel to the uh, slant route. What this would do is a lot of times it would leave this post route open right in this little void right here against man or zone. And so what people started to do when they got smart is they would basically take this backside defender and they would drop him into some variation of a, of a coverage that looks kind of like this to a degree, okay? And so this caused Clef to have to adjust, right? Have to adjust his setup based off of the defender's adjustments because they were basically sitting their zones on this post. And so if you tried to throw this, it would be bracketed really, really well. So his adjustment, which I thought was super interesting, was essentially the same route combination. There was only one minor difference and that was essentially that he would run a slant to this backside player. Um, this this uh, post would that he would basically turn it into a simple slant route. And what's nice about this slant route is it basically created a mesh concept over the middle of the field. And so what would happen is let's say you're trying to drop some zones back uh, to defend to defend that stuff over the middle, and I hit you with a deep crosser or an underneath slant 
all of a sudden it kind of changes, you know, what you're doing from a defensive standpoint. He'd also couple this with maybe changing up who's on the slant for that particular setup. And what you got in return was the slant route that could kind of get over the purple or under the purple, depending on how the opponent put that zone on the field. This coupled with a slot apprentice crosser or a you know hot route master crosser made all the difference in the world when we talk about how this play was executed um, at the highest levels because they couldn't really sit on, is it a crosser, is it a post, is it a slant? All three of those routes go at different depths and that's what makes you know this offense I think so effective is his ability to mix in you know different variations of basically the same setup um, doing something like this or something like this where this crosser you're going to see is just going to get deeper down the field. Now I don't have a great tight end but if I had a short and elite tight end that would be a little bit more consistent uh, in regards to you know beating man man coverage. I'll show it to you with Chris Godwin here for example um, just to kind of give you uh, just a look. Let's just say he was running it this way. You would see here that if they put a if they put a curl flat zone over on the right, this curl flat zone wouldn't get deep enough to defend that crosser right in that little area right there. So whether it's a crosser or a post, either one of those are going to work fine. And then mixing them in with the slant route, I think, was one of Clef's uh, you know best strategic uh, strategic um, initiatives. Another thing that I thought he could have done that might have helped him a little bit was maybe do something like this concept right here where we just change who's on the slant and who's on the post and now you have to be concerned about the slant right on the left and the post right on the right or if we were doing the same thing just the opposite direction. So these little minor mix-ups right here is really gonna make your offense sometimes it's a little things that pro man players you know do that most of us don't and I think Clef actually did a really good job at running a fairly simple scheme I mean it was basically slot post mesh PA cross those were the main plays that we saw him run uh, in the in the tournament and you know he was very effective so with that being said if you want to learn my entire Washington offensive ebook make sure you join our patreon the links in the description if you want to sign up only ten dollars to sign up and it gets you access to all of my Madden 23 offensive and defensive ebooks, including the Washington tight bunch and bunch tight end or a bunch open tight end. Thanks for watching. If you want to sign up and get all the ebooks, make sure you join the Patreon by clicking the link down in the description below.